God bless you, friends. I'm Pastor David Steve II, pastor of the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church. But today I come to you in a different capacity where I also serve as the youth director for the Bermuda Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And I want to invite all of our young people to come on out and be blessed at the youth camp meeting services. As you know, this year we're dealing with living by faith and living with faith. And it's important to understand uh, that this is the 35th, this is the 35th camp meeting of the Bermuda Conference. And we want to make sure that it's a blessed time for our young people. We've got a couple of speakers that will be coming our way in that of Dr. David McKenzie. He is the Union Youth Director, the Atlantic Union Youth Director. And he's going to be pre speaking to us to get us started off and for most of the week. But it's not just that. Later on in the week, towards the very end, uh, Pastor Teddy Williamson, he's going to be coming uh, to bless our hearts to close off the final weekend, uh, there for July 1st and July 2nd. What a blessed time it's going to be. Because not only do we have these wonderful two speakers coming, but all week long, all week long, we're going to be blessed with the amazing music uh, from a wonderful lady by the name of Mrs. Evelyn Fordham Goodman. And oh boy, you just can't miss this, young people. It's going to be absolutely tremendous, and we are looking forward to seeing you there. Remember, this will take place, if you would, starting, if you would, on the Sabbath morning at Hamilton. Sabbath morning, the 25th at Hamilton will be the youth services. And then every night at 7 o'clock, every night for the rest of the week, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then we will finish, we will finish, if you would, on that final Sabbath, July the 2nd, right there at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, normally we have some sort of afternoon program, uh, but due to the fact that we are having a special commissioning service, we are inviting everyone to make their way back up to Bermuda Institute for that commissioning service. We are planning a social event for you later on that evening of July 2nd, so stay tuned for that. In the plans right now, we're trying to put together an actual scavenger hunt where you guys can ride around in cars and go and look and find uh, the amazing prizes. And we'll see who wins that particular endeavor. Well, friends, you don't want to miss it. Again, it's going to be a splendid time for us young people together having a glorious time as we lift up the name of Jesus, as we learn during this incredible week how to live with faith. We are here in the year 2022. The Great Reset initiatives are being implemented right now. True, incredible scenes are shaping up on planet Earth, but what and why? Is there a historical record of events describing our planet's present economic and catastrophic scenes, climaxing with a new world order? Governments and citizens alike are asking the same questions. What in the world is going on? Be one of many to make sure you are aware and protected with the upcoming series, Signs of the Times. Signs of the Times will take place under the tent at TN Tatum Field from July 9th to July 23rd, except Thursdays. Admission, study materials, children's program, health screenings and lectures are all free. For more information, visit our website, Signs of the Times BDA. Org.
Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening prayer meeting. It's good to be in the house of the Lord because we serve a mighty and good God. You know, it said in Psalm 105 that, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of his wondrous works. Glory in his name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord, his strength. Seek his face evermore. And so I implore us, you know, to always seek the Lord. Put our trust in him because we know that our God is a just God, one who looks out for us. He wakes us up this morning and that's why we are here. Amen? Amen. And so as we worship this evening, we pray, Lord, we pray that his mercy will be with us, that his Holy Spirit will guide us in all that we do and say, bring honor to his name and glory. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord, that you have blessed us with life and health and strength to be here this another Wednesday evening to worship you, worship you in songs, in music, in exhortation, and in preaching of your word. May your Holy Spirit, Lord, be with us. May our worship be pleasing and acceptable unto you. We pray in a special way, Lord, that you will be with Elder Kim Aswood, your band servant, who will present a word from you this evening. May his word go forth, goes forth with strength, with power, with clarity, Lord, that it will bless and edify each heart, each hear that it falls on. May his words, Lord, honor you. May his word be impactful to everyone that listens, both here in this sanctuary and in the various internet platforms, live stream and YouTube watchers. Bless us to this end, Lord, and save us unto yourself, we ask, in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. amen. Normally, we would have birthday celebrants to send out greetings to this evening, but there is no birthday today. Nobody was born on June 22nd in this church membership of 900 people. No one was born on June 22nd. But God bless me, I was born on a certain day, a special day. And so, all, everyone else who has, been, who has celebrated birthday in this month of June, may God richly bless you all. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our prayer song by Sister Simone Tucker. Out of bridge. Can you hear me? Amen. Our prayer song is going to be hymn number three, sorry, 567. Have thine own way. I will sing two stanzas. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. Have thine own way. me and try me master today whiter than snow lord wash me just now as in thy presence humbly i bow Amen. Amen. Can you hear me? Amen. 
God has been good to us. And I know we are here. I know we are here because God has been good to each of us as well. And we are not only in the sanctuary here, but I'm conscious that we are watching somewhere out there. And I'm, if you are able to see me, if you are able to hear me, you have a lot to give God thanks for. I'm sure most of us are not watching or listening from prison or the hospital. And even if you are there, God has kept you for this moment. I pray that we will always just be grateful to him because there is so much for us to complain about on a daily basis. In fact, if you look long and hard enough, some of your colleagues you can complain about. In fact, some of your family members you can complain about. Some of your church brothers and sisters you can complain about. But then when you look at the glory of God, that each new returning day, he blesses us with the rain, the sunshine. He blesses us with friends, with a job, with a house to live in, with food to eat. And I could just go on and on. Let us be grateful to God and choose to praise him over choosing to complain. I have just 10 meaningful benefits of prayer as I come and deal with prayer here. God, our Heavenly Father, wants us to communicate with Him through prayer. He always listens to us when we pray. Daily prayer can bless you, your family, and those you pray for. It can also invite more peace into your life, help you learn more about God's plan for you. And I'm just going to share 10 benefits of prayer. The first one is prayer helps us develop a relationship with God. Most of us have children or we have dealt with children and we want the, your children to come to us. In fact, if they only come to us when they have problems or when they need something, we have a problem with that. It's the same way God wants us to come not only when we need things. Come and commune with him. Speak to him. Early in the morning, just speak to your God. Late at night, speak to your God. Whenever you have a problem, speak to your God. When you have things to praise him for, speak to your God. He wants to develop that relationship with you through prayer. Then the next one is prayer helps you gain understanding of God's loving nature. We know that God is love. The Bible says in 1 John 4 verse 8, God is love. And we learn more about him through praying and through reading his words. God wants to prove to us that he's a loving God because there is a lot of doubt around. There are many people who don't even believe there is a God. They don't believe that God loves them when they see so many things happening around. They have lost their job, their loved ones, but God loves you and he wants to prove that to you through prayer. Number three, prayer provides answers. When you pray to God, God hears you even before you call on him, but he wants you to pray to him. He wants you to call on him. The answer is already on his way. Just have that faith and call on God and let him answer your prayers. Then prayer helps you find direction in your life. You have heard many people say this. They are looking for a husband and they pray to God and God just brings the right person. And sometimes it's miraculous how you find your husband or your wife. You are somewhere where you weren't even supposed to be or just some challenges brought you there and then there it is that you find your wife or your husband. Pray to God. You want to see what direction to go in terms of a profession. In terms of studying, just pray to God. Young people, pray to God. He will give you direction for your life. Then prayer gives you strength to avoid temptation. Now this is an interesting one because I don't know that when you are going to sin, when you are going to steal something, you are going to shoplift or you are going to take somebody's husband or wife that you pray and ask God to help you to do that. Because God doesn't listen to prayers like those. But if you see a temptation coming up on you, you know you're going in an area where some temptations are lurking or something is happening, you're going to meet with somebody that you may be tempted to curse them out or something, just pray to God before because he is going to give you the strength that you need. Then prayer aligns you with the will of God. Prayer aligns you with God's will for your life. Pray to God. 
he will align his will to your life. And if you pray earnestly, even if you think there are people who believe differently, they are in different churches, they believe different things, but if you pray to God earnestly and honestly, he will teach you the truth. He will bring you to the right place. He will make sure that you are saved. Then prayer number seven and regular fasting can help you accept God's will. Prayer and fasting is not something we hear about too often in certain places. But at church, we should pray. We should fast. If you remember, when Jesus was starting his ministry, he prayed and he fasted for 40 days. And while I'm not recommending that because it may not work for some of us, I'm recommending that you fast. There are some people who fast once per week. There are some people who fast probably once per month. But you need to incorporate fasting in your personal life. And I would dare encourage you to incorporate prayer in our church life as well. I think the church should come aside at some point, maybe once a month, once a quarter, once a year, and just fast to God because he will hear us through our fasting and prayers. Then prayer can work miracle. I'm sure most of us here can attest to that. How many times has the doctor given up on us and you call for the elders, you call for the pastors and ask the pastor to pray for you and the doctors sometimes are just out of their wits. They don't know what happened. They can't explain, but we can explain because we have a God who hears and answers prayers. We have a God who is in the business of working miracles. We have a God who is a God of impossibilities. So if you have an impossible situation, take it to the Lord in prayer. Number nine, prayer invites the Holy Spirit into your life. When you pray, pray for the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that is going to help us to interpret God's words. It's the Holy Spirit that is going to help us to live right. So pray for the Holy Spirit. And finally, number 10, prayer helps you become more like Jesus. Now you remember Jesus had a great prayer life. Jesus even took his, himself apart and prayed. And we can pray with others, and we should pray with others. We should pray with our family, our children, like Job did. But sometimes you have to take yourself apart. In fact, you should do that daily. Take yourself apart and pray to God earnestly so that he can help you. And we need to do that as often as we can because we know we sin minutely, we sin hourly, we sin daily. We need to take it to the Lord in prayer. Just meditate on him, meditate on his words, call upon him so that we can be like him. He set that great example for us, that life of prayer, and we have seen so much of it in the Bible. Let us follow in his example, the great example of prayer. And as I prepare to pray, I pray that you will just bear these in mind because we want to make sure we pray meaningful prayers and we don't neglect prayer. Prayer is not something you just come and do when you have a need. You shouldn't just try to call on God when you realize your back is against the wall, when you don't have anywhere to stay or you don't have a job or you are losing your husband or your wife. Pray to God even in the good times. Pray to God when you have things to give him thanks for because God wants to hear from his people. He wants to interact with us. And when you pray to him, I can assure you, he is going to answer your prayers. Now I must warn you as I close that God will not always answer your prayers in the way that you ask. And sometimes if you look back, you will be happy that he didn't because God is too wise to give us what we ask for at times. But just know that God will always hear you. He will always answer you, and he will always do what is best for you. I'm going to pray now on our behalf while you whisper a prayer for yourselves and on behalf of your family and your friends and those who are in need. Because God is listening. God is tuned in to each of us. But just before I pray, I'm just going to ask you quickly, if you have anything specifically that you would want me to lift up in prayer. We already have one here that I would want to ask you as well to pray for and that is a 24 year old young lady who is in an she suffered from an aneurysm 
just uh, probably about three weeks ago, I was told, and they want us to pray for her. Her name is mentioned, so I'll mention it to you. Dahlia is her name. So just lift her up in prayers that God will see her through. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yes, so Sister Rose James, Sister Allboy, what's her first name? Mabel Allboy, and Pastor, Sister Mandas, and Sister Aka Simons, and Sister Aswood as well. Yes. Yes. So I'm just asking all of you, you heard the names, and that's why I repeated them. So you can whisper a prayer to, yes, Brother Burgess, sorry. Okay, yes, let's pray that they will be okay as well. Did I miss anyone? No? All right, well, I'm going to invite you to pray as I pray on our behalf. You pray as well for all these people. Let's bombard heaven with our prayers so that God can heal all these people. Let us pray. Sweet, precious Jesus, what a kind, wonderful, loving God you are. We take pleasure in coming to you in prayer because we know that you are tuned in to hear our hearts cry. And Father, I come to you not because I'm worthy, so I ask that you will forgive me of my sins as I call to you on behalf of your people. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come in your house to worship you. We want to lift you up now, magnify your name, and I pray that you and you only will be glorified as we seek to honor and glorify your name today. Father, you are such a wonderful God. You love us in spite of who we are. Father, you still continue to bless us each day. You bless us with new blessings each returning day. There is nothing that we need. All we need in you we find, Father. And we just want to thank you in the name of Jesus that your prayer line is always opened. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to make an appointment. We often neglect it. We often take it for granted. But, Father, we come to you now knowing that you are always listening when we pray. You have already answered our prayers. And we just want to put before you all these people who you have heard. My memory will not assist me to name everybody, but Father, you remember Rose James, you remember Sister Allboy, Sister Manders, Sister Aka Simons, and others, Father, who are ill, this young lady, Dahlia. Father, you are the greatest healer we know. And we know that even when men have given up on us, when the best doctors have given up, that's where you take over, Father. And we pray now that in the name of Jesus, you will stop by each bedside. You will stop by each home that is represented here, Sister Astwood as well. I pray that you will heal them completely. Father, we want to give you the honor and the glory because we know that you deserve nothing less. I pray that in all these situations, you will give us a testimony so that people can know that there is still a God in Israel who hears and answers prayers. We thank you for those who are tuned in, watching, or listening to us wherever they are tuned in from. I pray that you will grant them the same blessing that we seek here. Then there are those out there, Father, who may be distressed as well. They may need a job. They may need a companion. They may need somewhere to live. They may need even food. They may need to be released from prison, from the hospital. Thou see us in different situations, Lord. But we know you are capable of handling each of them. I pray that you will help that your people will look to you, will call on you, because you will never disappoint. We pray, Father, that you will help us to accept your answer to our prayers because we don't even know what is best for us. Sometimes we don't even know what to ask for, Father, but I pray that you will grant us, according to your riches in glory, our needs. And I pray that you will just reach out to each person who is here bowed before you. 
reach out to each family that is represented here and all the needs that we have expressed, even silently that we have not expressed, thou knowest everything. I pray that you will bless our young people, those who are graduating, those who have graduated, those who are moving on to other schools. I pray for our seniors that you will bless them too and keep them and help them to hold on to your unchanging hands. And Father, I pray for your manservant, Elder Aswood, who shall bring the word to us this evening. I pray that you will anoint him, give him a fresh understanding, help him not to come up here in his own glory, but Father, help him to come and lift you up. I pray that you will speak through him and use him mightily to reach all those who are watching and listening. I pray that you will continue to have your way at this meeting and help us to feel your presence when it's come to its end. Help that you will get all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And we ask that you will save us when you come. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Good evening, thanks. Good evening, good evening. Our song service this morning, this, I'm sorry, this evening, is we hand number 326, Open My Eyes That I Might See. I try to get it to tie in with the sermon, and I hope and pray that some of the words that we sing tonight in this song service will do just that. that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see open mine eyes illumine me spirit divine open my ears that I may hear voices of truth the sand is clear and when the wind knows fall on my ear everything false will disappear silently now i wait for thee ready my god thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Amen. Amen. Oh, appropriate.
appropriate that hymn was for the sermon title. <laughs> As I was preparing, I tried to find a hymn, but didn't know that one, Sister, Sister Tucker. <laughs> Our scripture reading this evening comes to us from Daniel chapter 6, verses 18 through 23. Daniel 6, verses 18 through 23, reading from the New King James Version. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the, to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel, the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, so that they have not hurt me, because I was found innocent before him, and also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. I pray that like Daniel, we trust and truly believe in the God of heaven. Um, this song, I think everybody should know a little bit of it. It is Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. If you know it, sing along with me. Of 
of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in your light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 I want to see you, I want to see you, I want to see you. Good evening, church. Our message today is entitled, Open My Eyes That I May See. Let us pray for God's guidance as we study his word. O kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we pray for a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just imagine for a moment that you are a Christian missionary who has been called to minister on a small island where the native people are cannibals. That was the experience for Pastor John Patton a trailblazing missionary to the New Hebrides Island in the South Pacific. Uh, Pastor Patton has shared the story that on one night, a group of hostile natives surrounded the mission headquarters. Uh, Pastor Patton and his wife thought for sure that the natives would burn down the headquarters and kill them. So they prayed throughout the night asking God to protect them. The next morning they were surprised to discover that the natives had left the mission headquarters. A year later, the chief of the native tribe who had threatened them that night, became a Christian. During a visit with Pastor Patton, the chief explained that they were too fearful to carry out their plan of attack that night. They had seen surrounding the mission headquarters an army of giant men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands. Pastor Patton and, his, and the chief, they both agreed that the only explanation was that God had sent an angel to keep them safe. This story is similar to the experience of Elisha in 2 Kings 6. When the king of Syria was at war with the king of Israel, uh, the Syrian king became uh, greatly troubled since the Israelite king had intimate knowledge of all his battle plans and was able to successfully counter his every attack. The Syrian king was convinced that there must be a spy in the camp, he demanded that his man reveal the spy who was sharing battle plans with the king of Israel. And one of his servants said, no, my lord, O king. There was no spy who was revealing the king's battle plans. And the servant went on to say, but Elijah, the prophet, 
who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So to deal with the situation, the king sent his army on a night mission to surround the city where Elijah was located. The next morning, Elijah's servant went outside and saw the Syrian army with their horses and, and chariots surrounding the city. Elijah said to his servant, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. If God were to open our eyes at this very moment and allow us to have a glimpse into the spiritual world, we would see angels all about us. We would see angels who are under the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We would also see evil angels who are under the command of Satan, the adversary of our souls. These angels are in the midst of a cosmic conflict, a, a spiritual battle between the forces of good and the, and the forces of evil, a battle between Christ and Satan that began in heaven. Revelation 12, verses 7 to 9 says that war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Yes, we are in the midst of a spiritual battle and we are either fighting on the side of Christ's angels or we are on the side of Satan's angels. There is no middle ground or neutral territory. We are either fighting using the whole armor of God or we are using the wiles of the devil or the tactics of the enemy of our souls to further his devious cause. Ephesians 6 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. To a large extent, the battleground for this spiritual battle is not Ukraine or the drug wars in city streets around the world, but the battleground is our minds. Christ and his angels are seeking to instill kingdom principles into the minds of mankind. These are principles based on love. These principles of the kingdom are the same principles that Satan rebelled against in heaven that ultimately resulted in him being thrown out of heaven. And to undermine God's kingdom principles that are based on love, 
Satan and his angels are seeking to instill worldly principles into the minds of humankind that have at its core selfishness. The real danger of these worldly principles is that they are so, they're so pervasive in society. They are promoted by the secular music industry, children's movies, social media posts, to name a few. That is why it's so important to guard the avenues of the mind and evaluate everything against the Word of God. Amen? For example, we read a lot of so-called wisdom on social media that on the surface sounds good and positive. But if you compare it to what the Bible says on the topic, you realize that the information is straight from the pit of hell. For many years now, children's movies with titles like Room on the Broom, Hocus Pocus, and Halloween Town have been exposing children to witchcraft. As a result of this, we should not be surprised to see the astronomical rise in the number of people who now practice Wicca, whose followers practice witchcraft and nature worship. And I think we all know how the lyrics in secular music has for years promoted values that are contrary to the values in the Word of God. Satan is using many strategies to instill his worldly principles in the minds of those who he is seeking to destroy. Another one of his tactics, his tactics is to instill fear in our minds. He is seeking to create fear in the minds of Christians who should be exercising faith and trust in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. However, we need not be fearful in this spiritual battle because Satan, with all the hosts of evil, cannot destroy the weakest of God's saints. Angels that excel in strength will protect them. And in their behalf, Jehovah will reveal himself as a God of gods, able to save to the uttermost those who have put their trust in him. Yes, we should be trusting in the Lord and in the power of his might and not becoming fearful and faithless when the enemy of our souls is attacking us. We become fearful because we too often, you know, we resort to trusting in our own strength and not relying on God to fight our battles for us. Let us pray that God will open our eyes that we may see that the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. Ultimately, this spiritual battle is a cosmic conflict between Christ and Satan. Now, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20, verse 17 says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Another text that will, will build our faith and help us not to become fearful is Isaiah 54, verse 17, which says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. When we sense fear rising up in our spirit, that should send us to our knees seeking the face of God. Our prayer should be for God to open our eyes that we may see that no weapon that is formed against us by the enemy of our soul will prosper. Amen? Amen. Let's take a look at the story of Daniel uh, because he is a sterling example for us in this area. When Medo-Persia defeated the Babylonian rulers, King Darius proceeded to divide his kingdom into 120 provinces. And he appointed princes to oversee each province. Initially, the king had chosen Daniel and two other individuals as presidents to supervise the princes to protect his interests. However, Daniel performed so well compared to the other presidents and the princes that Darius started to make plans to promote Daniel as his prime minister in, tar in charge of the entire empire. Uh, Daniel 6 verse 3 says, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The favor shown towards Daniel by King Darius ignited the jealousy of the leaders of the kingdom. So they conspired together to find fault against Daniel. But they found no fault in him. Alan White in Prophets and Kings says that Daniel's blameless conduct excited still further the jealousy of his enemies. We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel they were constrained to acknowledge, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. She goes on to say that the prophet was high in command in the kingdom, and evil angels feared his influence would weaken their control over its rulers. It was these satanic agencies who had steered the princess to envy and jealousy. It was they who had inspired the plan for Daniel's destruction. And the princess, yielding themselves as instruments of evil, carried it into effect. Here we clearly see that Satan and his evil angels were behind the attacks directed at Daniel by his enemies. And the same applies to us. May God open our eyes so that we may see that Satan and his evil angels are behind the attacks directed towards us by our enemies. With our eyes open to the spiritual realities, we can then follow the example of Christ on the cross when he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ also says in Matthew 5, 44, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. This is not an easy kingdom principle to apply in our daily life. But Daniel is our example that it can be done. As he never retaliated or spoke 
harshly against those who were conspiring against him. Daniel, no doubt, remembered the kingdom principle that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. So the presidents and princes inspired by Satan and his evil angels devised a scheme where they would flatter King Darius and trick him to sign a law of the Medes and Persians which cannot be altered. That whoever partitions any god or men for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. With full knowledge of the new law now on the books, Alan White says that Daniel, with calmness, he performed his duties as chief of the princes. And at the hour of prayer, he went to his chamber and with his windows open toward Jerusalem in accordance with his usual custom, he offered his petition to the God of heaven. He did not try to conceal his act, although he knew full well the, con the consequences of his fidelity to God. His spirit faltered not. Before those who were plotting his ruin, he would not allow it even to appear that his connection with heaven was severed. In all cases where the king had a right to command, Daniel would obey. But neither the king nor his decree could make him swerve from allegiance to the king of kings. King Darius was greatly distressed when he realized that he was manipulated into signing the law that would condemn Daniel. When his accusers approached King Darius, they reminded him that Daniel was a foreigner, one of the captives from Judah, in order that they may bring his conduct under the suspicion of being a political act of rebellion against royal authority. To some degree, you can say that Daniel was a victim of ethnic profiling, in addition to being persecuted for his religion. However, the law of the Medes and Persians could not be changed even by the king. So the king gave the command that they and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of the Lord's, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. So why did God allow Daniel to be persecuted in this manner? Alan White says that God did not prevent Daniel's enemies from casting him into the lion's den. He permitted evil angels and wicked men thus far to accomplish their purpose. But it was that he might make the deliverance of his servant more marked and the defeat of the enemies of truth and righteousness more complete. After a sleepless night, King Darius hastened to the den early the next morning to determine the fate of Daniel. 
The king was elated when he heard Daniel say, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. May God open our eyes so that we can see that the story of Daniel's religious persecution has prophetic lessons for God's people in the end times. There is coming a day when a storm of persecution will be unleashed upon God's people who observe the true Sabbath of the Bible. Just imagine being in a divine worship service and all of a sudden a large contingent of police officers enter the sanctuary. They then proceed to handcuff all the congregation and, and lead a single file to police vans lined up outside. Just imagine being a defendant in a court of law. You are being cross-examined by a government prosecutor who gives you two choices. Either deny your belief in the seventh day Sabbath and be set free or stand firm for the truth and be placed behind bars. Just imagine hiding out in remote wilderness areas or on a deserted island trying to evade the authorities to escape the persecution that is directed toward Sabbath keepers. When we are faced with the prospect of death for obeying God rather than men, are we going to follow Daniel's example? Even before this end time Sabbath persecution, we may find ourselves even now being persecuted for our faith? Are we criticized and belittled on the job for being a Christian? Do we stand up for our faith even if it means we may be passed over for that job promotion? Are we excluded from certain social events because of the principles of the kingdom that we uphold? When faced with these situations, let us follow Daniel's example. Alan White says, thus the prophet boldly yet quietly and humbly declared that no earthly power has a right to interpose between the soul and God. Surrounded by idolaters, he was a faithful witness to this truth. His dauntless adherence to right was a bright light in the moral darkness of that heathen court. Daniel stands before the world today, a worthy example of Christian fearlessness and fidelity. May God open our eyes to the end time events that, that are coming to pass all around us. And let us pray that Daniel's example of boldness, fearlessness, and faithfulness, faithfulness in the face of persecution will be our experience as well through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. O kind, gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this message that is instructing us that we ought to be looking to Daniel as our example in these last days. O Father, persecution is rampant in many areas of our world even today, individuals are being persecuted for believing in your son Jesus 
At this time, Lord, we hold them up in prayer. Strengthen them through the power of your Holy Spirit. But Lord, as we look at our individual lives, there's persecution going to come to our doorstep because the signs of the times indicates that your, your coming is very near. And you have indicated in your word that we must go through some of the same challenges that Christ went through whilst he was here on earth. And we pray, Lord, that you will now enable us to be strengthened through the power of your Holy Spirit, through a study of, of your word, through a strong prayer life, so that we may be able to stand and represent you well. Not being fearful, Lord, of earthly authorities, but help us, Lord, to keep you first, to uphold your principles, no matter the consequences so that we, Lord, can stand out as shining lights. And Lord, even if we lose our life like some of the martyrs did during the Dark Ages, you know, they served as a witness to bring others to Christ. And let that be our motivation and example as well, so that we may be, fear we may be fearless in these times of persecution, whether we have to lose our life or not. It's a hard thing, Lord, but through the power of your Holy Spirit, you can strengthen us in this regard. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 It's already... It's already, the hour is already late, but I will say this, Sir, you after listening okay. to no. this sermon, Please go. there's a scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 33, which says, but whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. And so brothers and sisters, I want to just encourage us that our testimony, the things we share about Christ and how he's changed our lives can help change somebody else's life. I know this is true because my life was changed as a result somebody's testament and so with that I want to encourage us as we go throughout the rest of this week as we approach camp meeting this week and those of you out there watching we uh, are having our camp meeting starting on this Sabbath so we want to invite you all to come out to I believe the adults will be uh, between BI and the younger ones in Southampton and the I think the older ch kids will be here right here at Hamilton Church so I'm inviting you all to come out and support this camp meeting, amen? And bring your friends, bring your family members, bring your co-workers, invite them out, because as Elder Kim just told us, the last days is near upon us. We need to be ready, and if we're ready, then we want our family members, friends, and co-workers to be ready, amen? Amen. 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 Let's stand for our benediction. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this blessing. Thank you for your word and for reminding us, God, that we should stand firm, be faithful, be fearless in the face of persecution, in the face of all the things the devil can throw at us. My prayer, dear God, is that a blessing will be upon each one in this sanctuary and each person watching here and around the world, that, God, you will strengthen us, lift us, gird us up, and prepare each one of us to stand in the day of persecution. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good night and have a blessed week.